The Windows 11 22 H2 update is finally rolling out to the public, and it brings some long-awaited remedies for known UX issues, as well as some interesting new features, the most prominent of which we're going to go over in this video. So first and foremost, I'm glad to report that the drag and drop restrictions in regards to the taskbar are finally lifted. I find it kind of strange that this is something I'm praising Windows for in the year 2022, but regardless, the drag and drop capabilities, or lack thereof, have been a huge oversight in the launch of Windows 11, now they're back, and really, I can't say anything other than that this is a good thing. For a brief moment, I honestly was kind of concerned that Microsoft might actually choose this hill as the one to die on. Luckily, earlier insider builds proved that this would not be the case, and now the latest public version of Windows 11 proves that as well. So from now on, to add a shortcut to the taskbar, you can just find an icon, click and hold, drag it down there, release, and there you go. The only caveat is that it appears to not work if the icon is being dragged from the pinned app section of the start menu. But hey, what are you gonna do? Same method applies if you wanna import files into an app that is open on the taskbar. So let's say you're working on a video project and you wanna quickly import some files into the editing software. Once again, you can do it the old fashioned way, just as you could in Windows 10 and earlier. Even though you still get this little forbidden icon, just ignore it. State of the art technology, really. I can't praise it enough. In terms of right clicking on the taskbar, you still get just one option. To get more options, as was the case at launch, you have to right click on the start button. Also, the taskbar still cannot be resized or repositioned, icons that are on it cannot be made smaller, nor can the way by which similar apps are grouped be changed. Windows 11 will be introducing a new overflow feature though, which makes it so the taskbar can accommodate more apps and also makes it easier for you to navigate through them in the case that they become overabundant. Notice how I said will be introducing as this feature is actually not included in the current 22H2 update, but is promised to roll out as part of the October 2022 Moment update. While we're at it, the Moment update will also include a redesigned photo app and a new homepage and navigation pane for the file explorer, which will finally have the ability of accommodating multiple tabs. But now onto the start menu, which has received a couple of updates that users have been asking for. First off, if you open up the settings app and head on over to personalization start, you'll see that you now have three different layouts to choose from. More pins is obviously gonna favor pinned apps. The default setting will sort of evenly divide the space between pinned and recommended, and more recommendations is just an inverse of the first option, but not really because here you get just one row of recommended apps, whereas here you get two rows of pinned apps. Doesn't really matter, you get the point. Also, the start menu now gives you the ability to create app folders, and it works exactly like it does on most mainstream smartphone operating systems. So you select a particular app, drag it over another that you wish to group it with, you release, and there's your folder. You can also give the folder a name and rearrange the order of the apps in it, but in terms of functionality, that's about it. Now I have to say, even though these new features and options do add to the user experience, they haven't really changed my personal workflow all that much. And I figure that if you were already okay with the start menu, these things will most certainly be welcome additions, but if you weren't, I really doubt that this will change anyone's mind. These changes really aren't all that significant. Regardless of whichever layout you decide to go with or how many folders you create, ultimately it's still gonna be pretty much the same Windows 11 start menu, for better or for worse. Personally, it's probably one of the few things I still haven't made up my mind on about Windows 11. I assume I would appreciate it more were I to use it on a touchscreen device, but for the way I do use it, I don't know, I, it does the job. I'm not blown away by it, I don't hate it, it's just fine. The Windows 11 h 2 update is introducing a new way of utilizing snap layouts. In addition to snapping windows to particular screen zones via the maximize slash restore button, you can now do the same thing by dragging a window to the top of the screen and then landing it into a zone from there. Other than that, they've made some changes to snap assist animations, which you may or may not even notice. And also, when you press Windows Z to bring up the snap layouts panel, the presets will now have numbers on them, I guess for better differentiation. Okay, so now I have to bring up a huge disappointment, and that is Game DVR. This is something that I talked about in my initial Windows 11 review, where I pointed out how lame it was that a major gaming platform like Windows had such lackluster screen recording capabilities in the year 2021. Well, now it's 2022. It'll soon be 2023. I was honestly hoping they would improve the Game DVR feature in this update, however, I'm sad to report that they 
did not, which means that it still cannot record within File Explorer windows or on the desktop, and the resolution still maxes out at 1080p, 60 frames per second. In the review, I said that that was still serviceable, but now, almost one year later, I really have to say I'm not quite sure for how much longer that is going to be the case. Windows 11 now has a new task manager, and it would sound really catchy if I said how they rebuilt this thing from the ground up, but it really works pretty much just like the legacy one. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. The task manager is good. It now includes a hamburger style navigation menu, which has the ability of minimizing, although it seems to just minimize and maximize when it wants, at least for me, so I'm not really sure how to do it manually. If I'm missing something, let me know in the comments. It also comes with a new efficiency mode, previously known as eco mode, which gives you the option of setting system resource limits to apps that get a little grabby. It can only be used for single processes though, and it's grayed out for core Windows processes in order to avoid any potential system instability caused by user errors. The new task manager also includes accent color support for process heat maps, and what is certainly the most important upgrade of all, it finally has a dark mode. Over the course of the past year, I was patiently waiting for Microsoft to add some differentiation between folders that have content and ones that don't, and finally they did it. But in my humble opinion, their implementation, how do I put this, it doesn't look that great. And I really don't know what more to say about this, I mean, the functionality is definitely there. It's been better for my personal workflow, but this here is still peak Windows folder design if you ask me. Definitely not this, so yeah. And finally, I want to talk about Windows Movie Maker. It's not there, but you know what it is? Clipchamp. So Clipchamp is a company that Microsoft acquired in 2021, and their video editing software now comes pre-installed with Windows 11. And I really have to admit, anything that may be lackluster in regards to their screen recording capabilities, they kind of make it up for it with this. Which is something I would say with honesty, if only it didn't require an internet connection for it to actually, you know, work which is just classic Microsoft and kind of sad really because it actually is a pretty useful tool, especially for people who are just getting into video editing. In terms of functionality, it doesn't just fill in for Windows Movie Maker, it actually gives you a lot more options, just with the exception of offline usage, of course. Also, because it's an online tool, they track your activities, the highest export resolution appears to be just 1080p, and render time is quite slow. But if they just made it a standalone app that you could use offline, they would have a really good thing here. Like this? Eh, it is what it is. Obviously, there's a ton of other changes that came with 22H2, but if we went over them all, this would be a several hour video, and we'd still probably miss some, so I wanna end it here. But feel free to start a conversation in the comments below. I'm sure that a lot of you have very strong opinions about this topic. I do my best to stay updated with all the comments, at least up to the point where they grow out of control, so I'm really looking forward to reading what you guys have to say. But besides that, thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay strong.